might have been the backbreaker in that game. Let's find out. Picks and bans for number two. And remember, this could just be it. Poppies yeah. could just take down Insignum right here, right now, in game number two. In this set, we see no more action, and Poppies are right on their way to the placement stages. That'd I mean, it is it is constantly cutthroat action right now. And, and we're doing it all again tomorrow, by the way, in case you forgot somehow. North America has to go through the same grueling process. So uh, if you're a Smite fan, I don't know how you could ask for more. It's going to be awesome, man. I'm excited to see the, the Poppies play that well and put Insignum's yeah. back against the wall. Now Insignum have got to find a way to respond in this game. And they, I mean, they've felt pressure on themselves before. But remember, they swept during that summer finals. And if you think back to when they lost the first few games during spring, it, they didn't look particularly good during that time. And, right. and I, think, I think they let that pressure kind of get to them in that spot. Maybe they've learned that lesson. We'll find out here pretty soon. Well, Insignum still feel pretty good, right? Essentially only dropping the Optimus Gang, so they've got to think they are the favorites in this matchup. And I like this, right? Prioritize this Mercury right off the bat. Lasbro, very good, Sir Cat. Very good in general, I think so. But Mercury is probably just the top god right now. He's definitely in that conversation, so grab him for yourself. Yeah, man, but Freya and Chernabog. I mean, that, that's crazy to give that up for the Poppies Yeah, banning right Erlong over both those. Is a yeah, surprising. man, that is very strong. For Chekio and for Warchi, Two, I mean, for as much as we talked about basically everybody but those two in that last game, those two did such great work throughout this split, and, and even during that game, they did very well. So to give up both Freya and Chernabog here to those yeah. two damage dealers means that even if Julio doesn't get the, the Changa or whomever, it, it's going to be difficult, I think, for Insignum. That's right. Geb can only look good if the people he's keeping alive are connecting on all their stuff, right? It, or else right. it doesn't do him any good. So for sure, they were certainly following through in that last game. They're going to have to here. But Jingwei comes through for some safety. Amaterasu for a ton of lane pressure and some really strong initiation. And Signum definitely have a strong draft so far. But I mean, if you give me Freya, Turner Box, or Ket, I'm usually picking that team every time. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then this Chunga ban was necessary by Insignum. That was solid from them. Yes. Now I wonder if you ban Geb this time around to try and actually be able to kill the Freya this time. That's a good point. If they put Geb on that team, I, yeah, that I, I think you have to ban Geb here. Maybe Odin is tempting. But there Geb, we go. Yeah, okay. So good, good second ban phase there from Insignum. Now the Poppies might be tempted to go back to the Odin, but put it in solo. I don't think that's great. Maybe uh, Terra here. Maybe Terra here. Maybe the tier for Julio. Sure, yeah. You know, Julio's he, tier. He's going to want tier because he's Julio. Uh, Kumba's, Kumba's not too bad either, though. I like this, though, but because they can still last pick tier, you might not want to if there's a chance Ardeo could still viably be picked. Sure. And so maybe they hold off, especially with the Cirquet. Ne well, there it, it does come through anyway. The Cirquet's already in Good. a lot of trouble. But I, I like if, if they do, now you definitely don't want to go tier. So waiting on no. it definitely works. Yeah. Uh, and, and this also lets Insignum just kind of wait and see. We can put this Ardeo oh, in solo oh, or in right. support. It literally is just based on what we expect to see out of solo lane from Julio. Now Julio knows that he really can't safely pick RDO without having to worry about that constant cripple. Or tier, rather. Agni's very strong. This gives them some range CC, which they might not have on this draft so much, right? With the Amatros and the RDO, those are very strong tools. But Agni can sort of, sort of cover those gaps. Yep. And there's that Odin. Once we know that it's a dash-reliant mid laner that comes in as well, this should be very strong. I, I like this Odin pick a lot. I was I was worried about it from the first three. Then you pick Ardeo Agni, two more gods who struggle against Odin. Yeah. I really like this draft from the Poppies. I just wonder if Insignum is going to be able to, to win the match off of the lanes that Odin will not be in because this is going to be Odin solo instead oh, of you're Odin right. in the jungle. So you can stay away from it a little bit more easily than Worst Turtle constantly showing up to fights with his Odin cage in the early game. If Insignum can get off to an early start here, yes. they might be able to get off to enough of a lead where this Odin won't be able to impact them. I think the pressure's on Lazbra to start Agreed. before the cage gets involved. As soon yep. as that cage gets in, uh, the Sonic Boom is so much worse. Yes. So if, 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 if Mercury can get going early on, it won't matter that the yep. Odin comes over later. So I think you're 100% right to point that out. Do you think that's likely to happen, though? Or which way are you leaning? Game three, or can Poppies close it out? You know, Poppies played so well, and I really like their draft. Me but too. at the same time, I just don't see a world where Insignum gets two out here. Right, yeah. This team is too strong, yeah. especially in these best of threes. Uh, you got to imagine they'll be able to bounce back with a draft like this. We're about a chance to find out. Can Poppies close it out, or will Insignum force one more? Tom and Tolly take us to the action. Hello and welcome, guys, ladies and gentlemen. Insignum and the Poppies are going to be here. Make sure you've got all your friends to watch this one, because this could be the upset. That's true. And what an upset it would wow, be. Wow, look at that. That's the power of fans, baby. <laughs> I mean, especially after winning that first game, I think there were a couple of non-believers out there in the chat Shun. that definitely switched their mindsets. Shun, the non-believer. Is that too much of a throwback for you, Tilly? A little bit. Charlie. Remember Charlie the Unicorn? I do. <laughs> 
I think the whole, at least 90% of chat will remember. <laughs> That's, Candy Mountain. That is the, the depths of internet history right there. And we could be looking at it. As Insignum has been the go-to champion, as I mentioned in game number one. The Summer Split champion, actually. Mm. And the Poppies here have year in, year out tried. I infamously said three years ago professional relegation losers at that point in time the poppies would repeatedly come up just reach the brink of success and then kind of falter totally here in season five i think we see a poppies that have reached that level of experience that they could get to that next level so i can't remember if it's season three or season four but during the gauntlet poppies actually took a game of off of energy <laughs> if you remember that <laughs> i and I then assume. energy got mad. Oh yeah, and then they they won in like twenty minutes. Game it was, two, it was twenty stop. minutes in yeah. game three, but they proceeded to win the rest of <laughs> the rest of the relegations or the not relegations and but the, the world uh, championship. Yeah, <laughs> unless that was season four, then which point I believe point it was, was United. Anyway, but yeah, that's like the most remarkable achievement that they've had before if they were able to find the 2-0 victory over Insignum today. And when you look at something like that, I don't want to call it fake, or I, I call it flash in the pan. It's a fluke, right? That wasn't representative of the overall skill talent of the team. Here, their performance in these round robins has absolutely been indicative of the lengths and gaps that this team has gone over. I, I at no well, genetics actually Ouch. could just die here. Draco Marino on the run, and the pots are ticking. Too much movement speed. Amaterasu a little too fast, too furious. Uh, level three, the Draco. Slow. We'll slow. There goes the root oh. man on the mark. If he finds the root, he finds the kill. Yeah. Not going to be the case. Blue buff invade unsuccessful for the poppies on the right Watch side out. of the map. Laz Britain Zero able to defend that. Surprised to even stance switch there, honestly, because he was under the movement speed aura. And granted, while you stance what you do, gain Heal. a little bit of health, but losing that movement speed allows uh, Draco Marino to catch up to you and look oh. for the, uh, the slow. There's a nice steal right there for the Poppies. Couldn't get the blue buff, so they get the purple on the left side. My final point about the Poppies and their history is that the team is stuck together largely, and this is how I like a team to stick together. Their core is the same, but they've made some necessary roster adjustments. I think it's silly to just pop roster changes very quickly. And I also, on the other side, think it's silly to have this Candyland view of your team where nothing goes wrong and everybody will be the same. But I think that I thought that was the whole goal to go to Ca Candy Mountain. I mean, that, that Candy Mountain, maybe. But Candy Land oh, is okay. not where anybody lives. And so you do have to make roster changes, but you can't be too quick with it. I think the Poppies, they've had their core. Warchi, Draco Marino, they've lost some players. Julio, a big ad uh, adaptation. Sure. They still have their identity as well. A full Spanish team. Something very strange or very uh, very odd to see in Smite. Usually it's a it's an amalgamation of different re uh countries in said region so it's nice to see the nationalities kind of stick out there that's just kind of how the internet has uh, evolved over the years because when esports was first starting off in any game you look at most teams are developed within its own nation right because everyone was playing together in a basement exactly. or like an internet cafe and being able to establish those friendships were extended beyond those cafes to the online phase, but now it's very easy to connect with others. You meet, Just play ranked. You meet exactly. You meet in ranked. You meet in Twitch chat. You meet in Mixer chat. You meet wherever you know you're going to be hanging out, and that's a big deal, I think. But the poppies have maintained their identity, have maintained not not just the nationality, but the identity of their squad, and and made some changes and learned the game and have become a better team. And this is a this is I, I love the story. Because like I said, there was a point in time where I would have laughed if you told me the Poppies were going to win. And when Hindu Man said on the desk today in Esports Weekly that he had the Poppies, I went, you know what, I'll take it. Huh. Insignum is the, is the clear favorite, but I can see a world where the Poppies do win. And here we are, tournament point. That's true. The Poppies, one game away from the Smite World Champion. I think Poppy has had the better draft than Insignum in game number one, and Insignum ad adapting by taking away the Gep and the Changa in the secondary band phase. 
So it's going to hurt the team fighting aspect from Poppies quite heavily, but switching things up to the point now of putting Julio onto this Kumba Karna instead. Doesn't have the same sustain as the Changa, but has more control to allow Warchi the damage that he needs. So I think Insignum needs to focus out this Freya. Also the damage. Zero going to be focused here. Bear form dashes forward, but the zigzag and the in hand should be enough. The heals are good. Zero has some help from Lazbra, but Lazbra misses everything. And so it's just a deterrent. Zero just by sheer will heals himself up after the last breath, that avoids the zigzag and the last hit from Worcester. And normally Sirkets will zigzag almost immediately after last breath or after the Cobra's Kiss, but that cripple field prevents those escapes from yep. occurring, so having to hold on to it for a little bit longer. Worst Turtle was in that situation where he needed to use that gap closer just to get close to zero, but couldn't find the basic attack during the poisons to pop it for extra damage. Well, this is trouble. First Blood could be right here. Genetics surrounded by the entirety of the poppies, and Julio69 gets the kill on the genetics. First blood for the poppies. Oh, Lasbra needs to watch out. Warchi's really putting in the damage. Level 8, red buff, having Book of Thoth almost fully finished. It's not going to be easy for Insignum to absorb that kind of damage. Not at all. The poppy's getting started very... Here's actually where I get concerned, Anatolian. I'm going to lean on you. I'm going to ask you to wear your player hat real quick. Anatolia, star player in his own time. My question to you is, the poppies have rarely been in this position the idea of the poppies being flown to north america to play at world championship level is there a world where they are too nervous to get this victory can the dreadlin take the game from them they are not nervous playing from home in this state this is just second nature to them especially in how long they've been playing together already right. in the online phase and I highly doubt that they're thinking about the next step. Every player is taking it one step at a time, one objective at a time, one call at a time to yeah. the point that they're focusing on the here and now. So Poppies, with the one game lead, they're not thinking about North America quite yet. They're thinking about how they could take away some of these European Insignum stars off the table. I would love to see that story happen in all honesty. Insignum would be a great story as well. Worst Turtle and Draco Marino looking to write a book in the mid lane. Death Pan are going to join up with Genetics, and the pings are out. So Insignum, they, they're standing on a ward here. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I like how Death Panther isn't throwing any abilities over yeah. the wall, revealing that the knowledge is common. And with a Sentry Ward also now on the side from the Poppies, they know that there wasn't any ward any longer there. Yep. So I like that idea. And that's how you can tell that they're not nervous. They're looking for plays. They were about to tower dive that tier one tower if Death Panther overstepped. And that's huge. That's huge because, as I said, the poppies, there, there is name. I've spoken to players in the past, and when you're a rank four team, rank three team playing up against names like Barracuda or, or, or Baskin, there is a moment where you're hesitant to make the same plays you might make on a lower end team, not just because of like, oh my gosh, they're so star, like star, he's better than the players you're used sure. to playing against. So you could be playing against all those star names, but you don't play a competitive game for what, three plus years that Poppy's have been playing and are still affected by exactly. that nature. Maybe the first couple of months, that could have been an issue. But at this point, that's just second nature to them. Yeah. And if that's an issue for you as an individual, you remove the name tags. <laughs> Smite has that option. Lazbra going for a ride. The worst turtle going to be tossed aside. Ring dropped down in the middle by the Poppy support player. Well, you're going to be stunned out. More defensive than not is Insignum. And Zero going to join the party from the solo lane. Isolating Julio, but still not done. Here comes Lazbra up the middle lane. Worst Turtle is going to come back around, but he's not here just yet. Lazbra's also exited the building as well. It's a four on four in the middle lane. Worst Turtle just looking for the invade. That's a play. That's a play. Small, slow, wow. and steady. No kills, no picks, training out ultimates. A lot of diversions in the mid lane leaves the speed buff exposed. And taking that away from a Mercury is the best case scenario. It's it's great game sense there, Tolly, is really what I wanted to bring up. As a jungler, you're a lot of it's your job to identify, all right, my left lane is spamming help. Yep. Can I actually help or not? And then you 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 
you correlate that to what's happening in the middle. You look at the mid game and you go, are you guys actually doing anything? Yeah. Are you doing something? And his team says, we're fighting. And he goes, nah. And he goes for the invade. Excellent use of time there. Going for the kills on the left side. Draco Marino with the jump last, but getting in range nice. just to make you look as Joshi goes for the last hit. Nice shot there. Assist from the jungler. Last hit going to Joshi on the Jingwei. Looking solid, I'd say. Yeah. Switching things up a little bit, going from the Rom to the Xingwei. Good whoop from Warshi. Resets the goal fury, but now he's in a 1v4. Warshi's going to get on out. The rest of the poppies slowly filtering in. Zero all the way on the right side of the map with no teleport. So it's up to Insignum to really milk this engagement. They don't want to fight five on five. Although with the poppies back at base, Insignum now eager to go. Julio. Controlling zero for the moment. And then Signum once again find themselves grouped up in the middle lane. Good timing to get their own speed buff now for Worst Turtle. If he really wants to, he can look for the counter speed buff invade that's about to occur in less than 30 seconds. Timer is available for that circuit after that previous engage. And we were talking about the you know the opportunity versus the risk. Right. And Everybody was in the mid lane, so there was no real risk for Worst Turtle, and he didn't have death, uh, the last breath anyway, so that was the best play he could have made at the moment. The Poppy's gonna go for the objective. 25% of the Gold Fury already. Nobody in anywhere near it. And the Poppy's do what Insignum did last game, yeah. and they just sneak a peek and take the gold. And that's almost the same exact timing from the last Gold Fury, 10 seconds later. Oh. Then it's Signum securing it in game number one. Poppy's on the same pace. Julio shows up, and that pushes Insignum off of the minor objective. The Pyromancer will still stand. Genetics and Draco are going to slap each other a little bit, and Draco's going to donate 50 gold to the cause. Actually, that's, that's kind of cute there. You see what Genetics did? So Genetics hits that ward twice. Hold that. Warchi. Not gonna hold that. He takes to the sky. Lazar genetics and Death Panner still under it. Wars Turtle gets the kill on a zero, but Warchi will hold that. And Lazbro becomes Asbra, because he's handing out L's. No Aegis for this level 11 Freya to survive under the own tier one tower. And without the Geb, they don't have that Geb shield to be able to keep you alive. So Warchi in a more sticky situation. You eliminate Warchi from these team fights. You eliminate the damage, therefore the control from Julio and Draco Marino becomes less meaningful. What I was talking about, the Sentry Ward down here, right? Genetics un like, revealed an award and hit yeah. it twice and then walked away. Totally. Allowed his carry to come up. The mid laner got the last hit, gave him 50 gold. Way to mid-max that gold per minute. Little things. Whether you want physical protection or you want the damage on your carries, that's an option to be determined in any given moment. Who's currently about to finish an item or trying to go for an objective and whatnot. Height of Urchin being rushed by Zero now after finishing off that Void Stone. As there hasn't been too much team fighting quite yet as we're approaching that 14 minute mark. Only four kills between the two teams, but that's going to go up pretty quickly with how much damage there is between the two junglers. Drake from Marino trapping two. One will find the exit. Genetic here in trouble. Oh, <laughs> Warchi blows him up. Here's the jump, the zigzag, and the grab. Chekio gets the last hit, assisted by the jungler and brought to you by the support. Good pick. Again, Draco Marino. Last time saving his teammates, this time trapping the enemies. Draco Marino just out of control. Five on four for 10 seconds. Poppies were thinking about sieging that tier one tower. It's going to slow their roll ever so slightly. And funny enough, all that thought though, Julio blinks in, gets a mess. Epic uppercut, looks for the root. Josh, he's incredibly low. Nice play by Lazarus, just coming right up the lane. Worst turtle wrapping around the backside. He's too far away. You've got to be in the team fight, young man. And Warchi falls down partially because the jungler is nowhere to be seen. That's right, he still had that Valkyrie's discretion. Zero will very low, as is Draco Marino jumping into the safety of that tier one tower. Now it's a five on four for Insignum, and they're Everybody not gonna backing. slow down because they're gonna go for the right side objective. Everybody saw the poppies back as a unit. That was a big mistake. Insignum now looking. They were thinking about it. I think the living nightmare prevented them 
from going for Fire Giant. Okay. If Living Nightmare was not used from Chekio, they instantly go for it. No hesitation, no questions asked. Wow. The damage, I think, from Lazbra and Genetics is passive to yeah. amplify from by 10% is good enough in a world where a lot of teams wouldn't be confident to go for that. I think Insign Insignum really wanted to, but had to worry about that global pressure. If Lazbra goes a more traditional Mercury build and he's got Critical Strike already online instead of the new flavor of the week tank bruiser Mercury with the Hide of the Urchin, they go for fire. I think they still they go fire. for it if there was just no ultimate from Chekio yeah. at the end of the day. Well, I'm saying even with the ultimate, I think Lazbra with crit strike just takes down the FG. I, I mean, think they go for it. I think I agree with you that they would take it down, but they don't want to risk it with Chekio even being the possibility of slowing you down because one good route is all it takes to sure. really stop a fire giant attempt. That's fair. That's a decent amount of AoE damage, especially when you're forced to group up around that little ring. You can see the stark differences in our approaches. I follow my just passion. I'm blind with passion. Go for it, go for it, is what I'm saying. Zero trapped in between three rocks and a hard poppies team is able to escape there. 20% on the bear mom. Chekio, however, losing the hunter battle. Joshi just hurt. That's kind of what happens when you use agility off of your persistent gust. You have so much more movement speed to make that chase an actual viable strategy. And with a little bit of a power spike of having that, what, 5% critical strike from that Shoryuken is all it takes to win a 1v1 battle. Gold Fury respawning now, and Signum is in the area. Not going to be fooled a second time as they pick up the oracles. Make sure to prioritize that. Genetics looking for Warchief takes the sky, ult for ult. Nice and easy. No cooldown reduction from either side, so it's going to take a little bit of time, oh though. My. Did you, did you, Warchief gets the banish from acro across the wall, comes around, threads the needle for the hit on the Death Banner, which keeps the Agni in, in, honest. Yeah. You can't really do anything. Like, that is... 33% of his health gone immediately. And just like that, that little bit of damage is all it takes for Poppies to start this objective. But in the back line, Lasbro wants to disrupt it. Gold Fury going to be leashed out as the Poppies try to defend in Signum's onslaught. Death Panner on the backside, half HP, already hit by Worst Turtle. Here comes the ring from Draco Marino. Down from the sky goes Chekio. Julio picks up Death Panther. And it could be the rest of the Poppies continuing to waterfall throughout the team fight. The carry left by himself. Here comes Julio for the peel. But Joshi, too slippery, finds his direct opponent. A four on four. Warchi now in a world of hurt. He doesn't have any ultimate to get him out of this one. He's going to take an ultimate spill as Zero gets credit with that one. Joshi looking for some more additional victims. But the rest of Poppy spread all across the map. Not wanting to defend his objective. And I think Poppy's bit off more than they can shoot. Yeah, Julio and Draco Marino looked like they started to come there. That was mm, not the most impactful Gold Fury, which is why I'm fine with the decision to walk away from it. Now the Tier 1 tower in the mid lane could go down. Julio going to put himself in the middle of the conversation. Worst Turtle now being pushed out. Here's Julio losing more HP. Worst Turtle losing all of it. That I didn't like. Yeah, the tier one tower from. You got to know when it's right and when it's wrong to defend certain objectives. And that tier one tower, Poppy's had no business fighting into that two on four. Yeah. Like, it's what? A circuit and a Kumakarna. Unless you're going to go all in onto a very low target that has the potential to spread the last breath poisons, then sure, maybe, but. With that healthy members out of Insignum, you weren't going to find that opportunity. That looked like a miscommunication to me. Julio as a Kumba Karna with the build that he has right now, I want him to go in 1v4. I want him to mez everybody. Yep. I want him to absorb some basics, uppercut. Like, he can do the dance. Serket can't. And Serket just walked in. Julio sitting Look there like, Lasbra. oh, I would just zone him. Look at Lazbra. Going to clean up Warchi here, potentially. Needs a couple more basic attacks. Gets the beads off to make sure Julio is not going to disrupt him. Draco Marino is looking like he's going to be the next target. Rooted and booted just like that. Yet again, Warchi using a very premature ultimate because he's out of position. Death Panther drops the bomb stun. And the only way to avoid it is by going up in the sky. Insignum's going to grab the fire giant. The poppies can't do much but just watch 
what was a tie game earlier at the 20 minute mark becomes Insignum's game to win. They're 3,000 gold up. They've got a fire giant around their waist as well. Joshi playing D as Czechia able to pick up one tower. Pyromancer goes down. That's the cherry on top. That brings us to the 3K. And now the poppies. We got to see how they can defend. That's true. They don't have the best defense composition either. No. They have a team fighting composition, and that's about it. They don't have like that mage from a distance that has, you know, like a bomb stun, for example, or a Kokokan tornado, celestial beam that just throws out one ability, right. clears the wave. The rest of the teammates are looking for angles to approach. But who is going to clear? Like Julio, I guess, on the belly bump can clear safely because he's a tank. That's about it, honestly. That's my big problem with, with Framen. Because if Draco Marino's in range to hit the minions with his basic attack, <laughs> that means the rest of Insignum is in range to engage on him. Tier one, easy. Insignum making this comeback look easy as well. The poppies have been a formidable opponent, and I think still will be. But we mentioned the composition not right. very strong defensively. The team has made too many mistakes, and that's given Insignum the game here. Warchi's positioning has not been strong. I don't like him on this Freya. They went from a defensive draft in game one between the Changa and the Geb to a more aggressive style right. onto Draco Marino playing this Odin. And honestly, I think that could have been maybe even a Kepri, as Insignum didn't ban that away. Yeah, I mean, the Odin I've really liked. Top damage for Warchi. Kills don't matter. I don't really care what your slash shot is. 0, 4, and 3, a little deceptive. He is tough damage. But he's the deaths do matter because it puts his team at a numbers disadvantage. Draco Marino gets death and oh. Here come Lazra right down the middle again. Those sonic booms have been some of the most impressive Mercury ults I've seen in a while. Two deaths already on the poppies. And then Signum not even done with the tier two. Joshi taking way more damage than necessary. Tier two goes down. Phoenix the next objective. Julio gonna get stopped right in his tracks as he's gonna go into the sleepy passive. Chekio having to use Aegis for as long as humanly possible. He dashes away, but I don't think that's gonna stop the rest of Insignum. They take him out. It's only Warchi it? to play defense. Insignum lost last time to the Poppies surging into their throne room in a similar situation. Warchi's gonna lift two, but Insignum are gonna lift the flag. Wow. Game two goes to Insignum, and we're going to the wire. Game three on the way. Wow, that was impressive from Insignum. What, what Poppies was able to do in game number one, Insignum doing it that much stronger and faster in game number two. And all it took was a little bit of molding around the draft and the play style. Shutting down Warchi, realizing that his damage is scary in the late game, and that's the best way to win smite game. You gotta worry about a late game hyper threat, eliminate them early. He was still able to do the damage, but he certainly was falling a little bit too early, and you can't fight four on five. Yep. Gotta see a different pick in the mid lane. Most valuable player for this one, again, up in the air. I am looking at Lasbro. Yes. There were some strong players in this game. Death Painter certainly stood up on his own two feet, but I think the SML mascot was outdone by his own jungler. Lasbro, every single team fight, zoom, and there's three people spinning around. That last one, exactly, at the tier two tower. And we talked about playing defense under the tier one tower. Poppies had no business defending sure. the tier one tower. Defending the tier two with Fire Giant, I still think Poppies were way out of position trying to defend that. They locked in zero. That's a lot of damage trying to be invested into a tanky RDO, and that's where things came back to hurt them. Game two's over. The defending summer champions will take it. We're going to game three, but first, it's Finch and Agro. What more could you ask for? A game three to determine who's going to make it out of the EU SML. Really, it's it, it's the way it, as it should be, isn't it? Exactly. <laughs> exactly the way that we would want it. And, and talk to me a little bit about what goes wrong here, because this one felt like it got away from the poppies in a hurry. I got to think it's around that Gold Fury fight, right? It is, but uh, but even at that point, I think that they're still in it. I mean, sure, and Signum's able to get the Fire Giant and, and do all this great work. But I agree with Tolly that defending tier two in that spot, I, I don't know that you're really willing to do that. Right. Especially with how few structures were left on the map. If you've got every tier two still up, that's a lot of gold that you can't afford to give up in a close game. But 1,500 at that point isn't a lot. And because the poppy's trying to defend, they get just flattened by a great mercury ult from Lasbra. 
and then there's no way that they can recover in time to, to stop themselves from losing the game. And Lazar was hitting big ultimates all game long off those sonic booms, uh, mostly through the middle lane, yes, but I mean, when you hit two or three people in the fight with a, with a sonic boom, it's hard to lose it on yes. the back end. It's such an important ultimate in, in those fights to make sure you're getting the most out of it. Another one who was oppressive, I felt like, with their ultimates was genetics. The dazzling yes. offensive stun durations were ridiculous, setting up for kills behind the tier one, and, and Signum looked very strong in this game, but Mixer Chat out there, you all have selected Lazbra as your MVP, as is your right to do. So I appreciate y'all getting out there and letting us know what you think. Lazbra had a great game here on the Mercury. He really did. He, he did, like you said, a great alts all game long, control of these team fights. And even though we were talking about this Odin likely being in solo, they Poppy switch it up, put Julio on the Kumbakarna. Right. And, and I like the idea to put Draco as the one that, that is going to pilot this Odin to get him around these fights more <laughs> often but it just wasn't enough. That Phantom pickup from Insignum was critical. Even that last team fight where they only caged zero, it's a quick Phantom, and then Lazarus is able to, to just crush them through the team fight. And that's, and we talked about it, right? Like you have to use the Odin so it can be more impactful early on, but they definitely didn't get enough out of it. Once this Arquette was already picked, they couldn't flex into jungle where I think it would have been right. the strongest pick for it. So they tried to make the best of that one. I think that was great heads up play from Poppies. I don't know if that was the play all along or if they called that sort of audible on it, but either way, I, I like they made it. It just didn't quite work out for him in this game. And the reason I preface it like that is because I don't think the Poppies had to do that much on the go back to the drawing board. You know what I mean? No. Like, to try and make adjustments in game three, maybe some poor target selection and where to take fights hurt them. But for the most part, Poppies can feel good about their chances in game three. I think they should as well. I, I, if I'm on the Poppies, my biggest concern coming into this, this, these picks and bans is let's just let's just ban Merc. Let's just ban Mercury. Right. We're going to put ourselves in a much better position after that. It, we, we really seem to have trouble team fighting around that and keeping track of where Lazra and his angles are going to be coming from. So if we take Mercury off the table, I think there's a lot more options that you can still have. Plus, I mean, the Circuit for Lazra that he played in game one didn't really do a whole lot for me. So sure, he might get that. I'm more worried about him getting Mercury, I'm worried about him getting Pele, and I'm worried about him getting Ratatosker. Those are the three that I'd be really concerned with here if I were on the pop.